but just as spectacular were the myths of the ancient Greeks. And there was no greater story than the lost world of Atlantis. The idea of Atlantis originates from the writings of the Greek philosopher Plato. He wrote about a utopian world that became corrupted and, as punishment, destroyed. No one has ever resolved whether the Atlantis myth was a moral allegory or an historical story. But the search to find this lost civilization has persisted ever since. And the events which once struck a ring of islands in the eastern Mediterranean have long been considered the inspiration of the Atlantis legend. Three and a half thousand years ago, an island volcano in the Aegean Sea erupted. The explosion left behind a vast bay beside the Greek island of Santorini. Had this been the destruction of Atlantis? To try and find out, archaeologists are examining the layers of volcanic strata on the island, which have preserved a picture of how life was before the eruption. Right here, ground zero. This is ground zero. Man lived on that surface. Man walked that surface. Man built a city on that surface. Here is a residue of man, what appears to be a broken field wall by man, on that surface. And then came the pumice, the down rained pumice, piece by piece, particle by particle, burying that landscape, knocking a tree down. That's the remnant of a tree. It's now whole because the wood is rotted away. And then the eruption continued with tens of feet of more pumice and ash. A tantalizing glimpse. But who were these people of Santorini? And are they a key to discovering the Atlantean race Plato described? He wrote of a great island power. At its center, a massive city built on concentric circles of land and water. And at its heart, a citadel full of spectacular treasures. Was Plato's circular city inspired by the round volcano which had erupted beside Santorini? The link between Atlantis and the island of Santorini hit the headlines in 1966 when a Greek archaeologist working on the southern side of the island uncovered some of the most beautiful works of art ever to be found at an ancient site. What was found was an unbelievably well-preserved town. This was uh, due to the fact that that specific settlement was uh, buried under the, the ash of uh, the volcano. This uh, layer of ash is somewhere near 8 or 10 meters, so it's quite a thick deposit, which means that two- and three-story buildings were actually preserved within this layer. But the most revealing discovery was of a wall painting. It represented a map of Santorini, and in the middle, it featured the volcano island before it erupted. It shows a profile of the island, one, two, three peaks. Those three peaks we see today. Going down farther, we see a waterway that surrounds a central island, a fairly large island, and on that island, a city. The impression one gets from this painting is a society that was able to have a large city on a small island, that they had a culture that would allow more than subsistence living. It allowed a large city to develop here and be supported by trade, exports, and imports. Plato had talked of an island civilization. And if the wall painting is to be believed, then perhaps it was that civilization that had once prospered here in the bay. Where we're sailing right here, we'd be bumping ashore 3,600 years ago against an island and then if we believe that wall painting, we wouldn't just be bumping into an island, we'd be bumping into a little city that was sitting right here. And the wall painting is our closest representation as to how that city might have looked. It's amazingly impressive. They are showing the landscape, the boats, the costumes, the people, 3,600 years ago in the late Bronze Age. It's a snapshot of a past life. The painting, bears an instant similarity to Plato's description of the circular city of Atlantis. But the people who had built it had no idea of the dangers that threatened to destroy them. There 
hadn't been any big major eruptions in this part of the world for thousands of years. So I don't think they had any concept of what a volcano was. The eruption began with a cloud of ash. The inhabitants on the adjacent island of Santorini fled for their lives as tons of volcanic rock erupted from a huge fissure. It goes up to 15 feet thick, this pumice, as it piled up. Well, before it ever got to 15 feet thick, they were gone. I mean, they left quickly. And that was a smart thing to do, because then it became a huge explosive eruption. Water from the sea flowed into the crack on the island volcano. You want an explosion, mix water with rising lava, and you've got a disaster. We had a disaster here. There's a plume here rising up perhaps 25 miles, and everything that's on that island is incorporated into that plume. The islanders of Santorini watched the island city vaporize. The volcano then collapsed back on itself, leaving a massive hole over 900 feet deep. That hole is called a caldera. It was filled by the ocean, and this provides this dramatic landscape today. The Atlantis legend lives on as marine archaeologists continue to search for signs of a lost city beneath the sea. And the catastrophic events which struck the island of Santorini have ensured that Plato's puzzle remains indelibly written into history. Such a massive, such an enormous calamity that had to get stuck in human memory. And things are stuck in human memory through mythology. And myths then remember this eruption.